in London. And uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Caitlin Thomas and Rakesh Gusain, who are here um, and they're leaders at BPMD. They're going to talk to us about improving customer experience excellence by using process mining. So I'm going to start with Caitlin for, uh, as a, as a, as with her introduction. She's a senior consultant with BPMD UK. She has successfully delivered multiple value-driven business process management projects within various sectors. She has helped a number of organizations to set up, build a process culture, and set up continuous improvement approaches. She leads BPMD's rapid process improvement and process mining areas. Caitlin has worked in both corporate and academic research-based environments, working hand-in-hand -hand with high professionals and deeply academic personnel to deliver successful project results. Great to have you with us, Caitlin. And we also have Rakesh Gusen, who is a director at BPMD's UK business. He has been working at the forefront of business process management for more than 16 years. And since in joining BPMD, he has continued to assist companies in strategic execution and in establishing a BPM discipline. Rakesh has developed several innovative approaches to solve implementation issues in a pragmatic and results-oriented way. So it's a pleasure to have you both of us really looking forward to your presentation on how we marry process mining with this with with our customer experience journeys thanks. thank you JJ. Thanks, JJ. Thanks. thanks for the introduction hey everyone good morning good afternoon as as jose uh please tell us we we are going to talk about how do you tie customer experience uh and uh drive improvements around customer experience using process mining now we know this session has been about process mining and we've heard we've had very interesting topics around what is process mining, how do you drive project prioritization, improvement prioritization through process mining, how do you drive robotics and, and, and all sorts of things around process mining. However, our focus today is to talk about how do you use uh, this uh, data, this data that you mine through your, you know, through these process mining tool sets to drive customer experience and uh, to, to execute your customer excellence programs, right? So in that sense, what we plan to cover today uh, is briefly talk about, can we move on to the next slide? Kate? Yeah, so we're gonna talk about what, uh, what we have heard in terms of you know, the strategy and the challenges around customer experience and where do traditional customer uh, satisfaction matrix fall short? So I know we use uh, NPS net promoter scores to, ma to manage customer satisfaction and cu uh, customer excellence programs are driven through it, but there are some issues uh, with, with these traditional approaches. Then we talk about how do you use process mining to actually get the get the whole team along with you and not 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 keep the whole team exercise more focused around the customer success team we have an example a real world example of how we started looking looking at order to cash uh, at a client and and through that journey uh, started looking at what really mattered to the customer and that that's some of the things we want to present today uh, so moving on next uh, what let's uh, let me quickly introduce uh sorry i think i've lost caitlin so caitlin can you move on to the next one thank you well quickly introduce us bpmd so bpmd is a small consulting firm focused on setting up business process management as a discipline. So we are, we have always, uh, we have a niche uh, developed around business process management and how do you set that up in your, in organizations across industries. Our focus, however, is around anything that deals with process. So we do, one of our offerings that we focus on is how do you manage stakeholder and customer journey and and through those drive process improvements and that's something we're going to talk about a bit more today but we also focus on what we call rapid process improvements how do you use technology like process mining task mining uh, to 
drive and manage your continuous improvement journeys. And all of this then leads to smart automation, which is how do you create interventions and how do you identify automation inter interventions on the processes uh, that, that are core to your business. And as a core, we, we help organizations set up that discipline around process management, that department, that governance tools and capability in the space, right? So that's briefly about us. As I said, today is more about CX, right? And how, how, important, how important is process management or process mining and how can that add value to CX? Now, I'm sure, uh, you know, earlier when we were focused on process in the last 16 years, process has always been about improving operations and how do you impact bottom line and how do you improve your processes so that your operations get more efficient and so on. But off late, what we've started seeing in a lot of conversations is people also want to drive uh, operation excellence and improve processes based on what matters to the customer. And that, that sort of conversation started with where do you start and apply robots? Do you apply robots to just uh, get your invoices processed faster? Or do you apply robots in chatbots so that you can speak to, I mean, so that you can serve your customers quicker? And a lot of firms, uh, B2B, B2C, and this is one of Forrester's research, uh, they, they aspire to be CX leaders and, 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 and they basically want to, uh, want want to ensure that customer experience is the key differentiation for their business. Uh, but a lot of them fail in terms of, yes, there's a good strategy and there are consulting companies that come in and tell you what your customer strategy or customer experience should look like, but they do fail in the execution. And some of the reasons is what we want to get into a bit more today in the session. Uh, so moving on to the next slide. Uh, what what we found based on our experiences, and we have had a few, I mean, we've, we've actually had a few sessions with all the customer experience leads in, in the organizations that we work with to understand how can process improvements help them, uh, you know, how can improvement in operational processes help them achieve better customer ex excellence. The key trends that we've found is uh, that there is, Usually when people do embark on these customer experience exercises, they, they do set up a good customer journey map. They identify their personas and they identify the happy path for the customers. And in some cases, even detail all the, uh, you know, all the different types of journeys. Uh, but what, what typically happens is all of this information is stored in good PowerPoints or presentations presented to the board or presented to the uh, you know the product team or the strategy team and approved and signed off and that's it i mean it's left there or it's then executed in bits and pieces it's, there's been a lack of overall collaboration between defining a customer journey or this is what what the customer values about our organization and how they interact with us and what does that mean to the business the operations team who are actually interacting with your customer on a day, day in and day out basis, right? So that's one of the issues we have heard a lot of, uh, you know, the customer experience leaders talking about is how do I get the organization along and how do I ensure that, uh, you know, my operations get, uh, get that customer as the king and help developing, uh, you know, the right services and have this whole customer first mindset. And what's, what's happened in this space off late is uh, a lot of technology started playing catch up and has come up with some cool features from a business process management space because all your processes have always been documented in your business process management repository tools like ARIS, software AD, ARIS, Signavio, and, and all the different tools are available. What's tech, what these technology firms are now doing is also creating a customer a modeling layer on top so that you can start capturing your customer touch points. And on the next slide, we talk a bit more about how that works. Uh, so basically, if we just uh, get on to the next one. Yeah. So basically, uh, uh, you know, here's your typical customer journey at the top, right? Where you talk about uh, the key bits of the customer's interaction with the business. Uh, 
but very, I mean, and then you can capture what are the sentiments at these various points and, and capture what, what the customer is feeling in this process. But what these tools now can do is you can start integrating your customer journey with the touch points of your operation processes. And this, this works as a suite in one tool. And additionally, what you can also start adding to this is uh, the various KPIs that are more important for you from a customer perspective and start measuring these KPIs uh, through process mining. So uh, as, an, as an example, uh, uh, you know, if, uh, if you were to measure, uh, you, if you were to measure this whole end-to-end -end process from a customer perspective, you would just typically ask for say CSAT scores. But if you started looking at what really impacts the customer, uh, you know, the customer experience, you would, the business would, uh, it would be very beneficial for the business to actually capture some business KPIs like on time, in full delivery, and and things like that. So that that's what uh, the technology is doing and is advanced in, and and you now have the ability to capture everything around your customer experience and the touch points of that to your business processes. And then additionally, you can start mining some of these KPIs through process mining technology to actually start looking at how this directly impacts what you're doing with the customer, right? And what we have found uh, as an interesting approach and have implemented this at various clients is to start looking at KPIs uh, when you're doing your process improvement start looking at KPIs that not just matter to the business in terms of operations, but also start building that KPI layer of what is it that the customer wants at this, at this step in the process. Just moving on to the next slide, uh, quickly talk about some examples where we have seen you know, traditional customer service uh, KPIs falling short. So for example, uh, net promoter score is one of the KPIs that uh, you know a lot of organizations use to measure uh, their customer success. Now, NPS is is an indicator. It's a good indicator. It tells you it tells you what you want to monitor, what you want to improve in your product, in your service, and it, it can even be used for organization and people, right? But there is so much underneath that influences an NPS. For an example, if you think of a call center, if you, you if you apply NPS to call center agents and say you get a result which says one agent scores 78 and the other scores say 32. The key question then for most of these CE projects is how do I further quantify what does that mean? Uh, as in how do I improve this person whose score is 32 and get that person to get to 78? Now the, the first thing as as we've been trained in process improvement is, is to figure out what is the root cause, right? So, and, and, and actually, if you think of it at a surface level, the reason someone uh, scored say 78 could be because they are servicing a client who's, who's called for canceling a specific order. Whereas someone with, uh, uh, someone with a lower score is dealing with a more difficult client or a difficult product category and so on. So it, it it becomes very important to start looking at KPIs from a business perspective as well, and actually finding the, that that relation between the NPS, the Net Promoter Score, and what does that, what drives that NPS. And you would say in this call center agent example, you would start looking at what is the average handling time, what is the first call to resolution time, and things like that. And that's where having an ability to continuously monitor what is relevant from a business perspective becomes really important. And also what this does is it shifts this whole measurement technique to more of a proactive approach rather than doing this once a quarter and then trying to analyze, okay, that's those are the reasons for my NPS scores to go low. With process mining, and, and we'll show you how, you are now able to manage this pretty much live and actually figure out what's driving certain behavior. So that's uh, that's the exciting bit that we want to talk about in a bit more detail. And we have an example for you, uh, but I'll just hand over to Caitlin to basically talk about how this works and what are the key components in 
in this typical journey. Okay, thank, thank you, Rakesh. Um, so I'm going to delve into a little bit more about the process mining side and how this interacts with your with customer um, experience excellence. So to start off, if, if you want to use process mining for your customer satisfaction, then the first thing you need to understand is what are you actually capable of mining to start with and how does that relate to customer satisfaction? Um, there's, a, there's a famous quote um, by, um, from Richard Branson that stated that if you make your internal employees happy first, then they will take care of your customers. Now, making your internal employees happy means that they can do their job smoothly. Uh, for example, um, without having to search for additional documentation or without having to curse at systems because they're just not working properly, just because the process isn't running smoothly. Therefore, your internal operational processes affect the whole customer journey. Now, there's a, a journey management philosophy um, where you start with the interaction of your customer. Um, so what do you think is important to the customer and how does that translate into the way that you internally organize your organization? Um, that can go as far as a specific customer journey map, um, an example of which you can see on the screen but also what we call a customer journey landscape where you take all of the different journeys together and from that point you start detailing out the practices around your customer interactions as a result. Now when you use a customer journey modeling tool um, there's a large number um, of reusable elements and most of these elements that you use for uh, customer journey um, mapping are elements that you have actually already used in your documentation for your business processes or your landscape. And it's just a matter of bringing them together in a different perspective uh, so that you can start to see where the relationships are between your organizational units, uh, your risks and the activities within your processes. Now, the moment you have that kind of visibility and transparency, into your digital twin, you will be much better able to serve your customer. So um, here on the screen now is an example of um, a value driver tree with associated um, key performance indicators. Um, a lot of organizations have a financial KPI tree, um, but they haven't yet figured out that below the surface, there is kind of another world of process performance indicators or PPIs, and those PPIs relate into your financial KPIs and also your business KPIs. By using this value driver tree approach, we can associate the business KPIs directly with the organization's strategic goals. Now, if one of these strategic goals was to improve customer experience and we need to identify um, where we can use mining for that customer satisfaction element, the main question um, becomes which parts of my business can I actually measure and mine that have a relationship to customer satisfaction? For example, your um, delivery reliability um, measures how good you are in delivering products to your customers. And on time in full is also a very good indicator for customer happiness when it comes to the procurement process. So um, a, a customer buys a product or a service from you as an organization. If you deliver this on time and also in full, then the only thing that actually stands between you and a happy customer will either be the price or quality. Now, this information can also be mined, but it's a little bit more difficult. However, on time in full is a very clear indicator of future customer satisfaction. So as Rakesh mentioned earlier, it's about being a bit more proactive rather than reactive. And you were then able to mine this easily. So you can apply process mining to your execution systems and you can find out where the problems are with delivery reliability and your capability to deliver the product. This means that you can then anticipate that the customer satisfaction in that specific part might not actually be as high as you would like it to be. And therefore, um, you can see that just by identifying which KPIs have an impact on customer satisfaction and how you can measure them is actually really key for your CX initiatives. So, um, Ultimately, what you do with process mining is you, is you look at the real life execution of the process, which is um, often 
very much more complex and substantially different from what you've modeled as your your as is process on um, and how you actually think the delivery um, you you deliver the goods to your customer. That's because process mining picks up the traces uh, the executed processes have actually left in your system. You then get to a point where you can see a relationship between, let's say, a, a, a suboptimal um, execution of a certain process and a, cu a customer satisfaction score. Um, so that's where process mining really starts to come into play. Um, a major benefit of process mining tools nowadays is the integration into your process repository, as Rakesh mentioned earlier. So the moment that you say, I, you know, I've done my process mining, but I really want this documented into my process repository now. Well, it's just simply pushing a button. You can you click and the process um, model is documented for you. And you can then use this process model for governance work or to complete further analysis, or maybe to communicate this suboptimal deviation um, from the design process with the rest of your team. From there, you can find the differences that will help you close that gap between your, your target customer satisfaction and the one that you're currently scoring. So on this slide here, we've just got two examples of tools um, that have strong process mining and process repository um, integration features, as well as um, a kind of customizable collaboration interface. Um, both of which actually have the ability to integrate your process mining KPIs and PPIs onto your customer journey maps. Um, I'm now going to hand back over to Rakesh, who will take you through an example of how an organisation um, use process mining as part of the customer excellence initiative. Yeah, so moving on to the actual example, we have uh, we have a video which uh, which we have fictionalized as SmartWorks, the company that uh, deals with compressors and basically talked about how uh, while Caitlin plays the video, basically this video talks about how this, these elements of customer journey maps, process models and mining all come together to actually help you track. Welcome to the BPMD and SAG ARIS Process Mining as a Service joint tool demonstration. SmartWorks decided to analyze their order to cash process using process mining in the hopes of aligning practices and generating efficiencies. Order to cash or O2C refers to an end-to-end -end business process behind the fulfillment of a customer's order. Here, you can view the key phases in SmartWorks' order to cash process, starting from the lead being generated to the payment being received. We can further understand this process through a customer's lens by looking at the customer journey map. Here, we have identified the key customer-centric KPIs and map them to the customer journey steps. With ARIS Process Mining, we can identify how to improve the customer's experience through the O2C process. Data was extracted from their ERP system and loaded into ARIS. The Process Explorer component shows the end-to-end -end process flow. It generates a process model from the event log data, visualizing the most important behavior of the process. Here is the typical linear pathway through the process. However, by turning up the connection skip, we can see less common pathways through the process. This builds the picture of what is happening in your organization, not just the happy path scenario. From this, we can identify rework and non-conforming pathways. We can also apply a cycle time lens to the Process Explorer. Now we can visualize process performance. The thicker the line, the slower the phase. This highlights process conformance issues where the delivery document created event is initially bypassed. 
leading to additional time added to the process, along with rework around the sales order approval task. As part of this process mining program, we have created a KPI dashboard app. After identifying key customer-centric O2C KPIs, we mapped a detailed description of each KPI along with the formula and events used to calculate them. This KPI dashboard enables the senior management team to have a transparent and easily digestible view of their KPIs, which can be accessed with limited or no process mining knowledge required. As an ongoing exercise, the senior management team is interested in understanding how their KPIs hold up against customer satisfaction scores, with a score of one indicating a highly dissatisfied customer and a score of five indicating a positive customer experience. This bar chart gives us an insight into the potential issues which could be leading to a poor customer experience. As we can see, the average number of delayed deliveries is significantly high when the CSAT score is anywhere between one to three. The dramatic reduction of delayed deliveries past this point enables the company to achieve a high customer satisfaction score of four and five, and thereby helps them to increase their customer retention rate. A regional dashboard highlighting the performance of each KPI across various countries can provide us with other insights. We can look at the trends on how each country performs across the different cycle time phases, impacting the overall customer experience. This helps us in baselining the practices around the top performers to achieve key customer-centric targets. This line chart indicates that the Philippines has the lowest average cycle time in the order to issue phase, indicating supply chain efficiency, which subsequently enables offering a positive customer experience. We can also compare the average customer satisfaction scores received by each country for instance, the lowest being the Czech Republic, with an average CSCAT score of 2.54, indicating mostly dissatisfied customers, and the highest being the Philippines, with 3.57, having mostly satisfied customers. Let's drill down further into delayed deliveries and its impact on the CSAT score applying attribute filters to investigate delayed deliveries when the CSAT score is between one and two, indicates that 75% of these cases has a delayed delivery instance and 0% of these cases were delivered early. On the contrary, when the CSAT score was five and 50% of these cases were delivered early, and delayed delivery instances were reduced to just 12%. As we dig deeper to identify the root causes for poor customer experience, we identify that 48% of urgent orders are delivered late. This is a significant indicator for SmartWorks to fix their urgent order processing, to provide customer delight and enhance their CSAT score potential roadmap to improve urgent order processing could include reduce the time spent on urgent sales order approvals, reduce the amount of time of SO approval rework, and ultimately adequate inventory and logistics management, especially in the bottom performing regions. In this video, we demonstrated how the ARIS process mining software as a service offering can create process visibility to enhance the customer experience 
through a standard O2C process. Please visit our website bpmd.com to find out more and get in touch. Thanks. Thanks for that, Caitlin. So, as we saw in that, that video, we just demonstrated the concept using one of the tools called ARIS Software AG. But, I mean, there are other tools, and one, one other tool we mentioned was Signavio. But I, I know we've had a session by Dr. Julian from SAG today talking about process mining suite. Uh, what, what we found interesting in the technology space is using tools that have a suite uh, where you have the ability to mine but also capture your processes and then capture your customer journeys integrate with your power bi tools and stuff like that that basically what it does is it creates an ecosystem uh, that helps uh, first identify what matters the most in terms of customer excellence and what are the processes to improve but also then use the same tools to communicate and change and tweak these processes and and take it back to the uh, to the operations team and you know, the whole cycle of change management is done quicker and and as as you remember the issues that you have with customer excellence or getting to your customer excellence that piece is that whole communication and the uh, and and being able to bring the rest of the organization together in the vision that you have and some of this can be resolved using the approaches that we've spoken about and and the uh, and the technologies that you saw right it just helps you build uh, an organization that's behind your customer experience strategy and it helps you leverage the the latest and the best mining tools and in in a lot of organizations where we work using this overall process we've been also able to identify where to apply your bots so that you can effectively serve your customers quicker. Uh, that that uh, talks about the overall issues and the approach. Now, let me let me just quickly uh, talk about an example of how we did this, uh, uh, and that's the next slide. Uh, so this, this is an interesting example because we were working with a, a B2B organization in the IT services space. So they basically provide uh, uh, you know, provide servers to big organizations. So when we started, we were interacting with the operations excellence team and the IT team, and the focus was all around order to invoice. We want to get we want to get cash in the bank quicker. But in the process, we did realize that uh, we started speaking also to the customer excellence team, and for them, the sort of KPIs they were looking at was very different. Uh, uh, but using process mining, we we were able to marry these two, uh, marry the expectations from these two groups, and actually find improvements which served both the customer and the finance team. And uh, in in this example, especially uh, if a customer raised an order, uh, they this organization had to raise a purchase order. Uh, and buy that product and then service that product and install that product at the client environment. And what we realized was most of their, I mean, uh, they could they could save 15 days in the time to cash uh, process uh, by basically not having a complicated approval system for low value peers. And that in turn actually got on time in full delivery to the customers as well. So. It's 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 this whole approach where we actually looked at the end-to-end -end process, defined what the customer touch points were, and then when we looked at the improvements and the KPIs, we were not looking at it just from a functional or from a business or a operational perspective, but also looking at where the customer is, uh, you know, cares about this process and how we can improve that. And and overall, uh, this is. Uh, gotten the customer experience team engaged and the operations excellence team is now uh, you know driving improvements which matter most uh, to even the the customers and and sort of move from this improving the bottom line uh, uh, you know function to actually doing stuff that matters to the top line so yeah that's an interesting example uh, and that's that's 
that's primarily uh, you know the story and that's the significance and if you were to to think about how you want to get this started and move this conversation to just operations mining to actually get get it uh, get it a uh, level up and start talking about customers i think here's uh, there's the steps it just been more uh, uh, you know using some of uh, some of the insights that you have around your customer pain points uh, to drive what are the key operational gaps and then uh, you know setting that expectation right at the start around these are the kpis that are really the reason for why my uh, net promoter score is not doing well testing those bringing everyone together and actually piloting a small process mining project which we actually were able to do in four weeks using some of these tools and then continuously scaling and improving your customer service or customer excellence because that's an ongoing journey there's never there's no end to how how good your customer service can be right so that that was the story we wanted to talk about uh, quickly i think there are a few tools out in the market and we have focused this discussion around the two eris and signapio but uh, and the demo we showed you was using software ag eris but there are other tools uh, what we find very interesting in approaching this is having a tool set that has the complete suite that is not just a modeling tool or a mining tool uh, but actually brings everything together yeah that's that's everything we wanted to cover Caitlin, anything to add no, all good. On to the Q and A. Yep, Jose. Excellent, Caitlin. Excellent, Rakesh. Uh, great view of the of the uh, interactions of uh, business process management, the customer experience, process mining. Um, I we have a few questions uh, that have been posed here in the in the while you're presenting. So I'm going to um, to pop this up here so that I can relay them to you. Um, let me come back on video now. Um, so, <clears throat> lots of different themes that have emerged. Uh, the the first one to just uh, kind of get us get us going here um, has to do with uh, uh, this. This is coming from William Fuller, and William is is asking. Um, why are the challenges to delivering on customer interface strategies still so basic? Is it a lack of vision, tools, or executional discipline? We should be better than this by now. Uh, so again, his question is, you know, that there are real challenges on delivering uh, on customer interface strategies. Uh, why do you think organizations struggle so much with that? Uh, I mean, I, I believe it would be interesting to get your point of view on this as well. But my experience has been that customer experience or customer excellence strategies are more done in silo rooms with the product team and you know the strategy team and maybe some of the customer experience uh, team members and that's where it fails because you do come up with a good strategy but there's in most of the cases that we've interacted with there's a lack of communication because our experience is everyone in a business would do the right thing for the business if they just knew what it was right so I, I think in the because customer experience is so broad and so big it means different things to different people on the ground someone i mean it's not very clear as to what what is it that that is driving an experience and i think people start forming their opinions of what that is i, I think it's the lack of communication it's, it's having this information available for the people who are working on it and maybe we get to KPI specific and talk about NPS. So this NPS, let's improve NPS by this and that, but not not getting into the root cause. So I, I think the opportunity now is very interesting to get some of the, uh, you know, the improvement thinking into this and being able to tie the two and actually make a real difference. That's, that's my point of view based on whatever we've seen. Very well, very well. Uh, we the next question comes from uh, Mo Guillermo Quintero, and uh, he asks: When we talk about modeling the customer touch points, um, who are typically the best people in the organization to be involved in that type of activity for modeling these customer point touch points? 
So uh, one, I think you would have to in, involve the operations uh, and and you do, I mean, most of these exercises do, but it's also uh, other than just the, you know, getting the voice, the customer, the product team and so on. I think it's also including some of the ops team who are working day in and day out with, with the customers and and process experts. So that's, you know, that's maybe the addition that we would like to see. Yeah. That's that's great insight. I see. I'm I'm kind of going through uh, several of the questions that have popped up here, so I want to make sure I cover as many as possible. So when you look um, um, at the estimate of increased SME subject matter expert availability for execution and customer experience after implementing process mining, so so um, what is that like? Uh, what would be an estimate of the uh, of this subject matter experts availability uh, in terms of execution and customer experience after we implement a process mining? Is there is there any evidence of that or you know studies that have kind of so, looked at that on how much time you really free up on those experts? So we we actually I, I think uh, what we do is in our approach we include the SMEs throughout the process and not just after the process. So and that's where we bring in people and data together. So, you know, a lot of mining projects are about, okay, let's look at the data and this is what the data is telling us and let's dig more and so on. What we found is if you start, start involving the SMEs and interview them already in terms of what they think the issues are, maybe not all those issues surface from your data analysis, but a lot of them uh, actually then help building that, uh, you know, building them along in your journey. In terms of answering the specifics of what percent of an SME's time, I mean, that that is very subjective depending on, you know, how you, how much of that process area is to be improved, right? But what we've realized is it's easier if you start with the SME first already, because then you're bringing them on the journey and then this data exercise is validating or disqualifying some of their assumptions on what the issues are. So I'm not sure if I answered the question, but yeah. No, I th I think you have. Um, uh, there could be multiple interpretations of the way this this question was was asked. So I I think you you have at least the interpretation that I had in my mind as well is the same as yours. Uh, I uh, uh, the, the 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 question that follows that up is related to uh, organizations departments who are engaging on uh, customer excellence now. And uh, and they are thinking about using process mining as part of that. Um, what type of capabilities do they have to build um, in terms of, in specifically uh, IT capabilities and know-how? You know, is this servers and things like that? But beyond that, you know, do I need a you know some sort of data scientist to be running these things? Is that what what type of skills and capabilities they need to have to to start on the right foot? Uh, so I, what we found is a lot of the skills actually sit in the organization already. It's just finding them and training them a bit. So I think the customer experience team and the business process management team, you might have those already. Uh, it's just about finding maybe some specific IT skills and training them on that. What we have found with, with our implementations is uh, maybe some of these skills, it's better to hire as consultants, and I'm not saying that because we are consultants, but you don't need a data scientist full time. And you do need a data scientist initially in the setup process. But after that, one data scientist or this whole set of, you know, your center of excellence with someone understanding how to cater for specific requests for the new KPI addition and stuff without a big uh, data science degree can still suffice. I think data science is something you can uh, maybe, uh, uh, you know, in, get in terms of consultants and get trained. But yeah, primarily it's about people who understand business processes and then uh, understand what matters in terms of what you want to measure and what you want to improve. I think uh, data science, maybe you need it, but you don't really need it for an ongoing, on an ongoing basis at that scale. Yeah. That, that, that's excellent, Rakesh. Rakesh Gusain and Caitlin Thomas, thank you so much for taking the time to share your expertise with our audience today. Really great exploration of the journey of customer excellence and the combination of process mining into that. So we appreciate the insights 
you have shared with our global audience today. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Rakesh and Caitlin directly from the UK, um, from London specifically, uh, sharing their experiences with the customer excellence journey and, uh, and the incorporation of process mining features to that. Um, we are going to be taking a break here and at the top of the hour, we're going to return with a, with a practitioner who is using process mining and the concepts of improvement and innovation to help her business grow. So uh, you you want she's gonna be doing the last session for us today, focus on project portfolio management in a growing company. So Jean Reesing is the process improvement leader for Metronet, and um, and Metronet is a growing business with an influx of new employees, and uh, and uh, they have lots and lots of challenges on growing the on, on growing that that business. And uh, one of the lines that she uses is that growth shines a light on the dark places hidden away by poor processes. So we're going to be shining a light on the, those dark places hidden away by poor processes and, uh, and looking at potential solutions for, for that issue, especially when you're trying to grow your business. So I'll see you back with Jean Reeson on the top of the hour. Look forward to her presentation to wrap up day two of uh, process mining live. So see you back soon.